Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Today, we're going to look at a very important paradigm in D3 called enter, update, exit. So it's important to know because it's how D3 assign visual elements to data points. So enter, update, exit is probably the most critical facets of how D3 works. And uh, probably, if you remember nothing from today, and the only thing you may want to take away would be enter, update, exit, enter, update, exit, and enter, update, exit. So it's really, really important. Um, so it's related to how uh, D3 assign elements and to your data. So the pattern in enter, update, exit is that it would select a group of elements, so let's say uh, circles that you want to create, and you assign the data to this group of elements. And then based on when your data uh, comes in or to be removed, uh, the elements actually get drawn um, on the screen. So there are three phases you can think of in enter, update, exits. So in the enter phase, this is where uh, new elements are created for data points that are not yet associated with anything. And then there's the update phase, uh, which is where attributes are set for all elements uh, based on data. And then the exit phase is when elements are removed uh, that do not have data anymore. So elements here uh, in orange are actual visual elements, and data in green are the actual data points. So at a first glance, so this may seem a little abstract. So what do you mean by creating elements of data that are not associated? So a little abstract. So we'll look at an example very quickly now and uh, to figure out what all those means. So here we have data. Uh, that we want to load. So you imagine in the beginning, we actually have no data. And so every time we call the function dot data, that is when we uh, load in data or change the data that we are seeing. In this example, imagine you do not have any data yet. And we want to see in all those three phases what we're going to get. So nothing in the beginning. So the first time we call dot data, uh, that is when we're going to change the data. So in the beginning, since we have, don't have data, the first time we call dot data, uh, one, two, three, four as an array. So that is uh, what we're going to see in the enter phase. So highlighted in orange here. In the update phase, we remember that uh, we're going to uh, look at all the elements, right? So since one, two, three, four is all we have, so that means one, two, three, four is all that we're going to manipulate. And then in the phase three, the exit phase. So since we're not removing anything. So that means there's nothing there to manipulate. So that is the initial scenario. So to recap, we start with nothing. We load uh, the array, run to 3, 4. And then in phase enter and phase update, uh, we'll be able to manipulate the whole array. And now imagine we are going to change the data. So instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, now we want to change the data to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And to change the data, we will call dot data again. So that means internal to D3 is keeping the state of the data so that it can actually track what are the new items that are added. So what that means is that in uh, the enter phase, now the elements there is 5 and 6. While for the update phase, you remember that we're trying to manipulate everything, everything that we have seen. So that means the whole array, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And for the exit phase, uh, since we're not removing anything, so that means nothing to manipulate. And finally, now suppose we want to remove some data. So data point, we want to remove uh, 4, 5, and 6. So how do we do that? We call dot data again. In this case, uh, we only pass in 1, 2, 3. So that's telling D3 that we want to remove 4, 5, and 6. So in phase enter, so nothing to manipulate there since we're not adding new things. Um, Update, we need to think about what it is. But for exit, we know that's easy. So 4, 5, six, and 6, that's what we're going to manipulate. So what are the question mark? So update is actually still 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, because nothing has yet been removed that removed yet uh, until the exit phase. So as a recap, so the enter phase is where you will see new data point. And for exit is where uh, elements that will be removed uh, can be manipulated. So also that uh, enter and exit will only exist when the data has been called. Uh, while for the update phase, you get everything. Everything that you've seen, everything that uh, you will remove, and so on. So 
this hopefully will give you a more concrete idea about what the enter update exit means. And that's an important thing to know, is because that is how uh, D3 allows you to do transition, how to handle dynamic data, and so on. If it's still a little abstract, I highly recommend that you go to this uh, link up down there. Uh, very, very uh, good example to help you better understand uh, all what all these phases mean. And there are some more examples, actually. There's one interactive demo to help better explain uh, what end update exit does. And there's even a very long full uh, tutorial about this paradigm. In D3, uh, whenever you call dot data, what it assume about your data is that the index of each data point will become the key. So that means uh, the index become a way that you can pull out a particular data, uh, data point. But often, the index automatically assigned may not be the best way you want to refer to your data. So in that case, then you might want to set it yourself. For example, uh, the two lines down there is essentially designing your own function, where you can say, ah, the first one, I want to use the data's ID value as the index. And the second line saying that we want to use the name of the data value. This is a typical skeleton of a D3 program that applies the enter, update, exit pattern. So in the first few lines, you will see that we're loading the data using the dot data command. And then after that, we'll be entering the enter phase. And then in the middle is the update. And then finally is the exit phase. So a big warning, uh, when you are looking at a lot of examples online, often you will see that they drop uh, the word group, as in this example, where Right after calling dot data, they immediately uh, enter the enter phase by calling dot enter. So we highly recommend that you don't do that. That's because it may confuse you as in like, which phase you are uh, working with. And this is particularly important when your data changes, as you will see in later videos, where knowing very precisely when data are added, when data manipulated or removed is incredibly important. And the main reason that often examples can just drop all those and uh, have an interface immediately called after dot data is because those charts are static. So uh, relatively simple, so everything can just be all come together. But I highly recommend that you do not. So just include uh, specific commands uh, so that you can very clearly see where the faces are. So in this video, we look at the very important enter, update, exit paradigm, look at some of the caveats in using it, and also some examples to explain it.